thank you for taking the time out your day, man, to do this, bro. Long overdue, man. How you feeling today? Hey, man, I'm good. Weather's great. It's about a good 42 degrees outside, so it's sunny, so I'm feeling good. Yeah, man, for people who don't know, man, me and Joe go way back to, like, elementary school. Like, this is, like, my real brother. So basically, man, how this is going to go, bro, man, we really just kind of talk about your background, man. I mean, there's, you've had a lot of experience in life, man. Uh, with that being said, um, let's start off with the first question. Like, what do you do now professionally? Okay, so first off, I'm in healthcare. Okay. So that's 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 the realm that I'm in. But essentially, I audit hospitals around the country. So making sure essentially that your PHI or protected health information stays safe. So when your medical information is being stored on a particular software system or it's being transmitted, so we're sending medical records off somewhere, I'm just making sure that we're staying HIPAA compliant or those entities that are sending and receiving the, that information stays HIPAA compliant in the process. How did you get into this? I actually stumbled onto it. So going back to 2018, when I graduated, I graduated with a degree in nutrition. And the, the the goal was to was to go to master go, go get my master's uh, degree, and <clears throat> I was going to major in or I was going to get my master's in nutritional genomics, so that was the route that I was planning on taking. So I was in contact with a university in Toronto, mm -hmm. and one of the professors there was essentially the creator of nutrition nutritional genomics and uh, the, the study of it. And essentially nutritional genomics is how nutrition affects your genetic makeup or your genetic profile. So that was the goal to go into that. Unfortunately, it didn't end up working out because me having me going to, to school in, in Canada, I was going to have to foot the entire bill. So mm -hmm. that just didn't work out. So I didn't know what that next step was. My partner ended up getting an opportunity in, in Tacoma, Washington. And so I just I just left uh, Philly where I was where I got my where I got my degree at and just went to Tacoma, didn't really didn't have a job. And so I kind of fell upon this particular job. And I would say essentially the my job description was was just basically sending and receiving medical information. Mm. So going to different clinics, different hospitals and sending information to whoever needed it. Within that process, I would probably say after year one or two, I was looking for ways to, to kind of expand my, my role. And that's when I stumbled across, I would say the more security side of, of what I do. So getting more into cybersecurity. And like I said, when I would go around to these clinics, my number one job was to send and receive medical information. But as I was going through that, I was seeing that these clinics weren't necessarily HIPAA compliant. And so that next step was finding out why they weren't HIPAA compliant. <clears throat> and from there, discovering ways that we could implement the safeguards to protect your, your patient information. So HIPAA itself consists of you know, physical safeguards, administrative safeguards, and technical safeguards. So just finding how we could better prepare or better secure your information and so that kind of expanded my role, and now that's what I do. So I also send and receive medical information, but on top of that, I, I go in and make sure that these clinics, these hospitals that I'm working with are staying HIPAA compliant through the, the implementation of the safeguards around your uh, PHI. Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, you started off doing one thing, and as you started doing it, it just naturally progressed into um, something else, so something more um, in addition to uh, what you were already doing. Um, what do you like best about your job, man? I would probably say what I ended up doing to expand my role. Okay. So the maintenance of medical records was cool, but like I said, it wasn't really fulfilling. And so that's why I kind of sought out the the extra responsibility mm -hmm. and i would say being more hands-on and being more uh, technical 
practical focused outside of just the the maintenance of these medical records. I would probably say that that's the most fun and fulfilling and kind of where I get my most gratification from. So not only being on site with patients, with nurses, physicians, et cetera, but also helping them craft these policies, these procedures around securing their patient information because it's important. Yeah. It sounds like you go to work, but you don't just go to collect a check. You're always, it sounds like you're trying to figure out how to make the environment better as well. So you were able to um, find more fulfillment in your in your work just by problem solving. Um, I mean, if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly. Let's be clear. There are times or I try to yeah. to just show up to collect the check <laughs> yeah. because I mean, I ain't trying to give my 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 all every single day. But I, you kind of alluded to it. it it's hard for me to just stay within one particular lane. And as I progress in whatever role that I'm in, if I see issues that arise or if I see things that need to be changed or implemented, it's hard for me to kind of look the other way. Right. And so I kind of just naturally take on these extra responsibilities. And fortunately for me, I have or I've also been able to advocate for myself when it comes to describing the, the value that I bring to a company and, and getting adequately compensated for it. So not only do I try to expand my role, but I also try to show the organization why I bring additional value and mm -hmm. also how that correlates to, to my current compensation. So it works out both ways for sure. Um, so I have two questions for you, man. I mean, you brought up compensation, so I'll ask that now. Or mm -hmm. actually, we'll put a pin on that, the question before that. What would you say is the biggest hurdle or that you're facing in your role or the biggest challenge? I think I think I, the, the biggest challenge is what a lot of people are facing now, and that's the buzz term of AI. But mm -hmm. it's it's realistic. I've seen it firsthand how it is, is changing my my job and just the whole landscape of of, of jobs in general. And particularly how what affects my job is a lot of it can be automated. Mm -hmm. So they are implementing a lot of RPA, which is robotic process automation. To have you heard of that? We're going to talk about that. Yes, I have recently. That's crazy that you said that. Man. We'll actually talk yeah. about that later, but keep going. Yeah. So they've implemented a lot of that. And because of it, it's it's causing a lot of my job to be to be automated. So I would say the biggest hurdle is navigating where I fit into all of that. Right. You know, I'll be honest with you, and, and, and I wouldn't be lying if I said that there is a level of concern when it comes to, to being laid off or my job mm -hmm. title changing or things like that. So I would say the biggest hurdle is just navigating that and finding ways that I can build my skill set in order to to constantly constantly evolve gotcha. and once again show that value with with the organization so it my role last year isn't going to be the same role that I have a year from now right so just finding out how how I can fit within that niche and then just make myself valuable to to the organization and just in general it looks like we're moving further away from job roles mm -hmm into more so job skills. Mm. So a lot of times someone would say, how do I get your position? Or how do I get into your role? And I think, unfortunately, that's going to be the wrong question that we that we ask. I mm. think the question now needs to be, what skills do I need mm. to be valuable, mm. right? Because there's going to be a lot of convergence. So for example, the the biggest hurdles. I'm finding out, like I, I brought up RPA, I brought up automation. Um, but in addition to that, coding skills. So writing scripts with the Python program, programming language is going to become important. Having those cybersecurity skills, you know, it doesn't need to be super technical, but you need to have a, a baseline. You need to understand what goes into that 
you need to know how to work with data, not only how to work with data, but how that data can translate into more efficient business processes. So these are types of skills that I would say the larger part of the job market is going to have to start gaining mm. and kind of taking away the 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 job title and just say, how can I expand my skill set? So one of the other things I also wanted to, to add on when I'm talking about upskilling. So there's a lot of talk around certifications and which certifications to get based on your career trajectory or what kind of skill set you want to you want to get to gain. And while I generally think that certifications are important, that's no longer the end all be all. Mm -hmm. And so certifications is is essentially just gaining the requisite information mm -hmm. that you can then take into creating your own portfolio. So let's just say you're you, you want a certification in cybersecurity. Whatever that whatever that certification is, you have to learn how to not only gain that information, but also how to build a portfolio around that. If you're looking at cloud computing, it's not just enough to get an AWS certification anymore or Azure certification. You have to take that knowledge and build something to show companies that you not only know how to retain information mm -hmm. in the certification, but you also know how to implement that in real in, in the real world. Right. So that's that's also an important thing that I want to that I want to to push forward. That's a distinction. So certifications are cool, but it's only to gain that that information and then put that into use and showing others what you're capable of building from that information. That's what's going to put you ahead of most other people. Right. Yeah, man. I feel you on that. I definitely could relate to that too. Because they'll, they'll be like, okay, it's cool that you did this, but do you have any experience in it? You have this education. I see that you completed this task, but do you have any tangible results from this information? So, yeah, man, I feel you on that. Before I before I cut off, in addition to all of those those hard skills that I talked about, what I've been seeing, especially in my role, is how advantageous it is to have soft skills. A lot of people overlook that and only look at the technical skills or what hard skills I need for a job. But now it's gonna gonna start going towards, like I said, soft skills as well. Can yeah. you critical think? How do you problem solve? How do you communicate? Those types of things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, especially with the skills. Obviously, the more skills you have, the more valuable you are um, to a company that you work with. So, I mean, you started talking about salary a little bit. Uh, what could someone expect to make starting out in this career field? And also, what are the potential career earnings in your career field? So <clears throat> I'm going to take it outside of healthcare and just more so generalize it into the auditing space. Okay. So IT auditing um, in general. So okay. what one could expect, I would say, on the lower end, of course, you got to factor in where you live. So location is definitely a, a, right. a, a deciding factor. But in general, I would probably say on the lower end, you're looking at about 60 to 65,000. Mm. And then on the higher end, it can, I've personally seen it go all the way up to, to 300 plus. Right. Now, like I said, on the lower end, you're looking at 60, 65,000. That's specifically the IT auditing space. Mm -hmm. But as you graduate, as you go along, as you evolve in your role, you're looking at more so GRC or governance, risk and compliance. Mm -hmm. So kind of adding those types of things to your tool belt. So there's a progression. And as you get more into the governing and risk and compliance area of things, then you start looking at more managerial positions. And one particular one is called the CISO. So okay. chief yeah. information. CISO. C CISO, so Chief Information Security Officer. Okay. And once you start stepping up there, like I said, I've seen packages three, four hundred plus. 
So there's a wide range just depending on where you want to go and how far you want to take it. Yeah, got you. Uh, man, this is a lot of good information um, that you've given. i uh, curious, what advice, what advice would you give someone who said, hey, that sounds cool, or I'm trying to find a new direction? What would you say to them? So it's a two-parter to my answer. So the first part is if you're looking at something more along the lines of what I do, be ready to, to read a lot. There's a lot of policy. There's a, there, there's a lot of documentation. Um, so you're, there's a lot of what they call controls that you have to set in place. So for example, you know what your password policies are for an organization. You have to be able to read through a lot of documentation in order to, to pass that information along. You also have to be a good communicator. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand who your target audience is and know how to break things down. So for, for example, I will talk to someone in IT a lot differently than I will talk to a physician, right? Mm -hmm. Those are two, even though the information is going to be the same, I have to deliver it in, 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 in two totally different ways. Right. So I would say you have to be ready for that. Be a good communicator. There's going to be a lot of meetings. There's going to be a lot of back and forth. So be ready for that. So a lot of reading, a lot of communicating. Okay. But it is, like I said, it is extremely lucrative. And you're, I would say you are security adjacent. So cybersecurity adjacent, if you're focusing more on the policies and procedures of things. But that's a good step in the door if you want to get into cybersecurity. This is a good way to do it. Okay. And you can kind of pivot from there. The second part to my biggest advice to people is start focusing on skill sets. Because at this point, there's a lot of guessing going on as far as what AI is capable of and what it's going to do and how it's going to change the, the landscape of humanity. But at the end of the day, no one knows. And so because of that, it's more incumbent on the individual that they start looking at how to expand their skill set and look mm -hmm. at different ways that they can contribute. So like I said, look into, you don't have to get hardcore into coding. You, have, you don't have to be a web developer, right. but at least know how to write a couple scripts in Python or, or know how to read HTML and CSS, those types of things. Cybersecurity is another one. Like I said, you don't have to get super technical. You don't have to become a pen tester or a hacker or a red teamer. You can just be someone that knows the foundations of what it takes to, main, to maintain a good security posture within your organization. Yeah. Data is another one. Know how to bring in that unfiltered data and know how to transform that data into a way that makes sense or that is translatable to to upper management, right? how this data can, can increase their profitability. It, it can uh, make their business process, processes more efficient, those types of things. So mm -hmm. I would say that's my biggest, biggest advice is just start focusing on skills more yeah. so than, than actual job roles. Cause it's hard out here. Like I said before, I'm not gonna lie and say I'm not worried you know, for my current job role. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm kind of in the same boat as as a lot of people, you know, trying to figure out the best route to go and just what has worked for me. What has worked for me is just once again, just expanding what I'm capable of doing and then advocating for yourself and and, and showing how you are a valued asset to any particular team. Right. It sounds like you're saying like, man, you got to be well-rounded. You can't just be like, hey, I know how to do this. Take me because this might not be enough to fit the system. So you got to be well-rounded. You have to be a constant learner. Um, you got to be a, you got to be a constant learner. Yeah. So, so that's, that's kind of my two cents. Was there any last like bits that you wanted to sprinkle on? Just that this is a difficult time for a lot of people. For a lot of people. And so, unfortunately, we're having to evolve at a quicker rate than, than in other times in, in our lives. But I would say just there's ebbs and flows. 
always. There's ebbs and flows always. So during the during the downturn, this is when you you level up. Mm. When the job markets are bad, when when there's a lot of uh, indecisiveness out there, this is the time to level up because it, like I said, there's going to be an uptick. We right. don't know how that up, uptick is going to formalize or, right. or it, it's going to look in the next couple of years, but you want to make yourself as well-rounded, kind of like you said, as possible when that uptick comes. So, you know, we can sit here and talk about how bad things can potentially get, but you know me, I'm, 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 it's hard for me to look, look that way. I'm, I'm almost overly optimistic at times and you gotta, you kind of have to pull me back. <laughs> so yeah, I'm always going to be the one to, to try to find different ways out and right. no, everything isn't going to work. But right. like I said, you just want to make yourself, uh, just prepare yourself as well as possible in many different ways and in many different areas as possible. And that goes professionally, but that also goes for personally as well. In times like these, when we don't know what, what will happen, mm -hmm. better yourself personally, become right. a more well-rounded individual from within. Right. Because that's going to translate to how you put yourself out into the world. So yeah, I, I would say that's probably the last bit I would want to sprinkle in there. I'm glad you said that, man, because I know you and I know that everything that you just said is true just for me knowing you. So I'm glad that you shared that with, with you know, everybody. So so we had this podcast a few years ago, me, me and you and Mercy, man. So we so we so we going to go off of what artists say now. Yeah. Really? The really? Art, yes, man. How many how many artists come <laughs> out and be like, yeah, this is my best album yet. Um, this is by far my best work. And it's trash. How many artists? Really? We Lupe, really about to go. Lupe does that every album. You can't. Man, you, you say something about Lupe one more time. <laughs> bro, we go off of Lupe. To end this conversation, I have a graphic, man. I know you kind of saw it a little bit already, so it's cool, man. Let's pull that okay. thing up real quick, man. So right. pick four albums out of that. Top four. But before you pick four, okay. just eliminate two off the rip. Two just got to go for whatever reason. Like... And two gotta go. Two gotta go just off the top. And and we, we see what's on the list, man. Let's be clear. It's, it's got that heat on there. Two gotta go though. Off top, which two going? Respectfully. Respectfully. <laughs> Respectfully. Let's be clear. I like all these albums. Word. Res respectfully, the first one that probably has to go is. The Twister album. Word. Although I really like that album. It was a real good album. That was a good album. The second one for me may be a toss-up. Okay. Let's talk about it. Mm. I would probably... Mm. Word of Mouth or Rick Ross? Word of Mouth or Rick Ross. Okay. All right, what well, we riding with? Who going? You know, what? I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Rick Ross. Rick Ross out of there. All right. So twist mm. out. Of there. Rick Ross out of there. Respectfully, like you said, it's nothing. Respectfully. Left. All right. So now we got ten left. All right. What are the top four? Top four. Yeah. In no order. I'm just I'm just I'm just doing four for yeah, me. Just four. Get rich or die trying. Okay. I would probably my top two for me is get rich and die trying and Jeezy. And Jeezy? Those are my two for sure. Word. Word. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm those are, those, I'm I'm a little surprised, man. I am. I don't disagree. To me, though. To me, both of those are classics. Okay. So we, got, so we got Get Rich, and then we got Jeezy on there. All right, two more. And then I would probably say two, uh, my last two, Scarface and Nas. Scarface and Nas? Scarface and Nas. Okay. Okay, so 
that's more aligned with what I was expecting you to say, honestly. I mean, I'll tell you this, bro. So for me, the two that was gone off rip, I'm not even looking at it right now because I remember Twister was out of there for me and Scarface was out of there for me. Now, let me say this. Scarface had one of the best tiny deaths like ever, you know, so it's no disrespect, but just being honest, like I wasn't really bumping that that much back then. So those two were just gone for me. Mm. Um, Get Rich or Die Trying was an automatic like slot. We both said the same thing. Um, T.I. is up there for me. Man. So, but uh, Kanye is on there for me. And then the fourth spot probably would have been I mean, probably a J, man. I mean, you know, I thought it was. Quiet as kept. Quiet as kept. I was close to dropping J off. Dropping J off. <laughs> the Black Album, bro. I wasn't. I wasn't a big fan. I wasn't yeah. a big fan of the Black Album. It was cool. Yeah. But yeah, it definitely wasn't. Yeah. One of my top albums. Yeah. Of J. It's and let's be. I mean, it's nothing weak on there. So everybody's gonna have their taste, man. That Wayne was easy for me to go. For real. I think if it had been Carter 3, we'd be having a different conversation. Like, yeah. Carter 3? Yeah, Carter 3 over Carter 2, for sure. It's Carter 1 for me. Or Carter 1. Carter 1 got some... Carter 1 is a top hip-hop album for me. You think Carter 1's the best of the... Out of all the Wayne albums? Yeah. Yes. I, I, and personally, I don't think it's close. Okay. You know what, man? This is a different conversation, though. I think Carter Three for me is his best album, sonically speaking. Like it's just the perfect. Like, so for Ti, mm -hmm. it would be Paper Trail. Um, for Kanye, it would be My Dark Twisted. Like it's just so sonically, it's their best product, but it might not necessarily be their best music. So that's what Carter Three is for me, for Wayne. But Carter One. Bro, Carter One made me really made me a real Wayne fan for real. So I'm not mad at that's him. That's the one. That's, that's the, the one. one. Bro, I, I, you're not gonna. I'm not dying on the hill of op like opposition for that. Like that was a fire album. So I ain't gonna hold you because this is you know this is your production, but I, I do feel the type of way you ain't got uh, my man on there. That's, <laughs> that's neither that's neither here nor there. What I'll do. Is I'll just put a clip <laughs> from our podcast on there. <laughs> like a throwback at the end of this, and we'll end it like that. <laughs> Go. Say Lupe yeah. last album ain't trash. <laughs> it's not that good, huh? <laughs> it's not that good. Not gonna get heard the album top three. Top three all time. In hip hop or in, in music? In hip hop. Yeah. I I'll, said that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate you, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, you know I rock with his first album for real. For yeah. Trump, so, but yeah, man. I appreciate, I appreciate you for having me. Thank you. It yeah. was a pleasure. It's um, hopefully, hopefully, you got. Anybody listening got any information out of it? Um, if you didn't, still thank you all for listening. And I appreciate you, bro, for just putting this information out, you know, to everybody. So yes, thank sir. you. Much love, bro. All right, man. Peace.